I want to remind you that the coalition of Muslim women in Nigeria is made up of different Muslim women organizations. And being a Muslim woman is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can see the array of Muslim women we have who have just spoken to us very, very intellectually. If not for want of time, we would have been able to listen to them the more. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the message they have passed across to us beneficial. And we also pray that Allah reward them immensely and increase them in knowledge. We are having an interview now. What I mean by that is we want to watch some of our children do presentations to us. Earlier when we started, we had very smart, intelligent children from Esteem Learning Center did a very wonderful presentation of a poem. This time around, I want to call on students from Starkville College. If you are here, we are waiting for you to come and do a presentation for us. It's Starkville College here. Can I hear you answer? All right. Please move smartly. Don't keep your parents waiting. After Starfield College, Great High Academy should be ready so they don't keep us waiting. And after Great High Academy. Um, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, we're students of Starfield College, and we're here to present on the theme our hijab is our crown, not our crime. Uh, late last year, a disturbing incident took place here in Abuja regarding a Muslim woman, which went viral on all social media platforms. This was a lady covered in hijab at a cafe waiting to meet up with an acquaintance. Out of nowhere, she was approached by one of the employees and asked to leave the building. Why? Because of her choice of covering because she chose to cover what was perceived as too much, because she chose to be dutiful to her Lord by, ab by abiding by the hijab. What excuse was she given? That her clothing made other people there feel uncomfortable. Those people, they saw her and by extension her presence as something discomfortable, discomforting, something abnormal and something alarming. This. This is the world we live in, where every Muslim woman on the face of this planet is not spared from such. Where every Muslim woman at some point in her life is made to feel not only unwanted but despised. As if her existence alone weren't some form of outrageous fear, anger and immense hatred from others. In the circumstances we happen to find ourselves in as women of this beautiful faith, it is no surprise to see us having second thoughts about the hijab or even forsaking it in large numbers. In light of this, the message I have for my mothers, my aunts, my friends, sisters in faith, myself included, is simple. Despite the difficult times we live in, we must not conform. We must not relent. We must stand tall and be confident in our hijab. We must be confident in our faith. When we look back at our history and the legacies left by the earliest Muslim woman, we are able to derive an incredible amount of strength and courage from how they viewed religious rulings, including the hijab, and how they reacted to those rulings. When we look at how the Prophet ﷺ himself reacted to societal pressure and hate, we see that he never for once let them change his beliefs or let them modify his uh, practices. This is the example that we must follow. It is hard, believe me, I understand that it is very hard to do that in our day and age. But remember that Allah does not burden a soul more than it can bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of the condition of this world presently and how difficult it is to put Islam into practice, especially for us ladies. But he knows that this is not, nothing we cannot collectively bear. The hate, the pressure, all of that is nothing we cannot collectively overcome. 
I'll end with a verse in Surah Tawbah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا Say, never will we be struck illa ma kitab Allah lana except by which Allah has decreed for us. Now look how Allah ends this verse very beautifully and full of hope for us. He says, huwa mawlana. He, i.e. Allah, is our protector. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And so let the believers rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dear sisters, understand that us being viewed and treated as a crime is something that Allah has decreed for us. But He is Mawlana, our protector. And He calls us to rely on Him with regards to everything we will face in this life. So during this period of adversity, we are facing as Muslim women, let us hold on to our religion and have full faith in our Lord, our protector. So on this note, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for us to embody the hijab not only outwardly but inwardly as well. I pray that Allah gives us the strength, the courage and the confidence to be the proud Muslim woman we should be. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So let me, about, uh, let me start by saying, we Muslims are jewels. Allah did not ask us to wear hijab. Allah commanded us to wear hijab. Allah was the one who made it a beautiful symbol for us as Muslims. It is the best adornment for every believing woman. So let me jog your memory a little bit. It was a time of Kogmaya and era of hallucentricism. When Mecca rejected Islam, Muslims were suffering from persecution and their hatred for Islam went wrong. Women were maltreated and downlooked, were also considered as less human beings. Then the Prophet came as a ray of light when the earth was covered in darkness. Girls went sick but still euthanized and then he came to save their lives and he gave them their rights. As ladies, we should be delighted and be grateful to Allah for such liberty that Islam has given us. The Prophet was surrounded by visionaries and great minds. The idea of hijab was institutionalized by one of the Sahaba, Umar. He started his point of view with the Rasul upon seeing how the non-Muslims approached married women of that time, gazing seductively and appreciating their acquisiteness. He told the Prophet it would be better if there is a veil in between to avoid such heinous gaze. Just a minute after, the angel descended scenarios like this has been recorded over 15 times where Umar shared his view and only to be supported by an ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 59. So this is to show you how Allah is generous in gifting humanity with such a marvelous human being. And Allah said again in Surah Al-Nur, verse 30 to 31. My beautiful sisters, Malcolm X once said, the media will make you think that the oppressors are the oppressed. And the oppressed are the oppressors. So what is our crime? Is it because we accepted Islam's moral standards and we seek to eat? We are addressed with derogatory terms every day. We are jewels. So let me ask a question. Will a king or a queen feel ashamed of wearing their crown? Then why should we feel ashamed of wearing our own crown that was given to us from the Almighty Allah? Why should we be afraid of wearing our crown that was given to us from the Almighty Allah? It is a gift that was given to us to the Muslims, not only Muslims, but the special women among the women, which are the believing women. So the last thing I'm going to say here is, we should never let ourselves be down looked on in hijab, because hijab is our pride. We, we should, should be, be proud of wearing hijab. Thank you. Wassalam. I'm a dress code for Muslim females who reach puberty. I'm not about the outer appearances, the indecent looks and impudicity. I'm all about nobility, modesty, integrity and purity. I minimize the rate of immorality by restraining the desire of men to fornicate. My name is Hijab and I am a symbol of good behavior that you can impersonate. An Arabic term that means to cover, shelter, to hide, to make imperceptible, invisible, to conceal, disguise, to mask, to become hidden, to be obscured and disappear from sight. 
I would like to clear some misconceptions on the way I'm being viewed and the white supremacist perception. I do not hinder feminine contribution. I'm not in support of religious bigotry or misogyny. I give you a sense of satisfaction, relief, contentment, and protection. I'm not a symbol of oppression either, hindrance or discrimination either, restriction or low education neither. I don't give you a feeling of imprisonment, mistreatment, harassment, or subjugation. I against infatuation, sexual exploitation, ex sexual exploitation, superficial scrutiny, and temptation. I am given by the Almighty Allah. My name is Hijab, and I am a symbol of good behavior that you can invert the ring. My name is Hijab, and I give you a sense, a feeling of guard, a feeling of wanting, a feeling of obedience. And do you know what? People don't wear me because of oppression. They wear me to fulfill a lot of obligation. And women of such caliber are like diamonds that can be budged because they don't use their beauty to gain attention of any such. Oh, you think we should wear the hijab because it's antiquated? Well, press forward or backdate it. Quran is never outdated. Islam will transcend forever updated. Why are you degrading me? I will levitate for eternity. You think? It's not my choice in your thoughts of liberation and rejoice. You feel it's not my liking. You feel I'm being forced. Hold up, don't get lost in my vocabulary. You are the weak and I'm the strong and I will fall for your vulgarity. Because I have rejected the trap of man. Cheap clothing, jeans and mini skirts. I'm a girl with high self-esteem. My name is Hijab and I am a woman's best jewelry. I said, Bill! You see, I was tempted to just tell them it's okay. You know, for once of time, we couldn't take more. But the presentation is so eloquent. They talk like netting girls, they're so beautiful, they're very soft spoken. May Allah bless them. And may Allah bless us too. We have two more schools to present. And I pray the indulgence of the teachers or guidance of the schools that are here to kindly make it very short and precise because it will soon be time for Zulu. And once the call for prayer is made, we will lose our audience. So um, if we have Great Height Academy, can you come and give us half of your presentation, please? In the name of Allah, the was such that when one observes the hijab on the outside, she has to observe the hijab on the inside. And what does it mean to observe the hijab on the inside? It is to observe haya. Haya means virtuousness, modesty, humility, and shyness. And haya will be in Shyness is part of faith. But where are the kind of birds and scissors? Where are the kind of birds that has to be messed up with? The design where the absence of Haya is to be in much greater tragedy than the loss of life. Every one of us as Muslims should have the sense of Haya which should affect our conduct before our Lord, before others, and even when we are alone. From the way that you carry yourself alone, everyone around you should know, yes, this is the Muslim sister or this is the Muslim brother. This is not only from the way that you are dressed, but this Haya is the way that you walk, and this more is the way that you this modesty should reflect on virtually everything that we do. Why don't you look at the life of the companion? Fatima Yadela Wana, for example. Fatima Yadela Wana was so bold that even at the time of her death, when she became ill and her death was imminent, she told Fatima Yadela Wana, she said, when the time comes to do my janaza, do it as night so that no one can see my video. And when you bury me, bury me as night so they can see my video. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, let's note that when one is shrouded for death, his or her body is completely covered, no skin is exposed. Yes, she was still worried about her video being exposed to death. But now we are so okay, as long as every part of our skin is covered, we don't care whether our video is exposed or not.
Hijab is not just a piece of God. It is the Muhammad from Allah, the pride, dignity, and honor of every Muslim man. Sheikh al Ghani said, You understand that the faith is not one of the parts of the body to be covered, but considering the corruption of the modern day, and the need to stop the means for further corruption, it should be covered. During the period of the Nikia, women were made to dance naked in front of the Kaaba during ceremonies and festivals. Islam came and blessed us with the Kaaba, but unfortunately, we are trying to go back to the period of the Quran. Some people think that the Kaaba is only to cover the head. The Kaaba is to conceal the shape of a Muslim woman. If your, head, if your head is covered and the shape of other parts of your body are shown, you are not wearing the Kaaba. Some people even ask why we should wear the Kaaba. If Allah commanded us in Hijab in the Quran to wear Hijab, He said, Zalika Adna, no Rafa Salai, He said, This is so that you will be known as respectable and few women in the society are not being protected. America in this year recorded rape cases of over 87,000, while Egypt recorded rape cases of only 87,000. That is the ratio of 1,000 to 1. That is, one woman raped in Egypt is 1,000 who is raped in America. Ask yourself, which one of these two countries actually have women? That obey Allah and wear the hijab as you have commanded. You are obeying people that are modernizing and modifying the hijab for you and you obey Allah as well. But are you seeing a zina come to Islam and Allah has seen her? They should not expose their feet, they have served that feet to the parents of you. This is the hand and the face, the popular opinion. What comes to that they will be hand and the eye? Allah says, وَمَنْ يَعْصِرْ لَهَا وَرَسُولَهُ وَإِنَّ لَهُ نَارَ جَهَنَّمَ قَالِهِ مِنَ الْحِيَا أَبَدًا Whoever disobeys Allah and his prophet, for him he kept and will abide there forever. Imagine entering hell by a voice, which is something that protects you and something that is good for you, something that will be there for you. The prophet said Allah was talking about something that will come in the end of time. They will be hard to hear from Allah. Allah said, 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 Let's see if that let's say I'm not wearing the hijab. Let's see the name of the hijab. Let's see if we put the hijab on. We care so much about what people see about us wearing the hijab. What all they will see in the end. In my life or in my life. Let's see if that's where the hijab is good for us. If you are not wearing the hijab yet, please start. You can start with a cap. From the cap you can go to a head cap. You can start with your head cap. You can then go to 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 your head cap. She was the one that covers you from head to toe, and then you can transform to a hijab. They are not easy for us. There are conditions for us, but there are no conditions that should be followed before the land is satisfied to be a hijab, which is it must cover one from head to toe. It must not be for him, it's not that exactly that. It must not resemble the dressing of the part, it must not resemble the dressing of men, it must not be the dressing of men. It must not be tight on the It must not have pictures of hunting of them. It must not be attractive like colors or having a story It must be thick enough to cover what is in the shape of the world. Allah restore Haya and Bodhis to the Uma. Allah make it easy for us to wear the best form of 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 the best form. Atakbir. Indeed, which of Allah's favors can we deny? So beautiful. Very interesting presentation. I ask you to be on standby. If your presentation is 10 minutes, cut it to 5. If it's 5 minutes, cut it to 2. If it's 2 minutes, cut it to 1. <laughs>
taste and touch. Helper who must be used and flow. Quit in our back and then quit in our back and then as the power took the shield. He said that this is the shield and will that covers her feet and his flow. The scholars have a way of and show and veil and what it has on the back of our feet. I always come to write the love and help. And I have to alter a soul and love, so the love I make was a love. I decided my attitude to do it in what he married, they said, I lay high in the heart. But all that, in the heart, I lay high in the heart. But all that, in the heart, I lay high in the heart. You got to give a hold up and make up. You got to give a hold 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 up. You that she asked the messenger, may I last for years and put me upon him. Does a woman pay in the shield and veil? He said, the shield is covering the top of her feet. Narrated by Abu Dhabi. I thought that it was a real war for Abu Dhabi. That I put there in my eyes and said, I can't afford to send him to the teacher. Give me what you buy me from him. But can I get an interview? From Aisha, from Aisha, the law of Anu said a woman must have three garments in which to pray: a shield, a jubah, and a veil. Aisha, the law of Anu, that shows that nothing of her clothes is covered. The scholar has stated that if a woman wants to pray, she must cover all her body except for the face. Among the sort of women dressing is that her dress should be loose and not tight, so that it does not reveal any part of her. As you can see, as you can see, in my case, I truly tight about clothes. Mine is loose and flowy. Mine should come and wrap up. and may he bless us all. Now, moving very, very quickly, I would like to recognize the presence of Al-Haji Abdul Rahman Balogun Arab. He is the president of MNPN. You are welcome. Thank you for coming, uh, taking part in this very important occasion. I also want to welcome and um, recognize the presence of Sheikh Musa Yusuf Onobu, national missioner, Iman. Thank you for coming. Also in the hall with us is Pustas Yusuf from Muri Abuja. Now, we pause for goodwill messages. And I would like to invite our mother, our sister, a parliamentarian, Hajia Aisha Duku, honorable member of the House of Representatives, to give us her goodwill message. Atabir. Yeah. 
Allahu subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran that we should dress. I, 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 I thank my daughters because they have already started putting their ayah in Surah to observe uh, uh, the verses. But 32. This is a commandment from Almighty Allah. And in the same Surah al Ahzab, uh, verse 57, no, verse 58, Allah is giving instruction to the wife of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and to all the Muslim women because we all want to be identified as the Muslim women and the verse is Ya Ayyuhan Nabiyu Uli Aswaitika Wabanatika Walisa Ilmumini and that is including all of us Inshallah. She said that she let you know what MNP is. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All uh, protocol details are uh, MNP simply means Muslim media practitioners of Nigeria. MNP, in which are national presidents. So once again, I say salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi. What else do I say about why we are here? Than just to encourage each and every one of us uh, uh, to, to keep on the struggle. But just permit me within my two minutes to just say the following. This uh, is what is trending now. Uh, you have seen some people coming out now to, even among us, to attack us. Why is that the, is that the next thing? Is that this, is that that? 
I remember in the 90s when uh, Professor Isaac Wakakitola uh, started this Friday struggle. People started attacking him. Uh, when, we, when we started the issue of uh, um, Mohara, they started attacking. Why this? Why that? Why is it that when Muslim, when Christians are doing something, we also want to do our own? Well, like they have quoted for us from the Quran. This is a basic thing from the Quran. It's not that we are just creating it and it's just an awareness. So the message is this don't be distracted and then don't engage anybody in all this. Uh, don't join them in uh, what the job did. Don't, uh, I mean, what are we doing now that is around? No, just tell me if there's anything that we are doing that is around. Just tell me. So, nothing. So they will not do anything, but those of you are doing something, they will criticize you. That is one. Two, from our previous court uh, intervention on hijab, we have in Abelkuta, Lagos, Iloni, and Ibadan. The one that they seem to have won, which are going to appeal in Abelkuta, what the, uh, their own lawyer used was that the ayah quoted by uh, but my honorable, we are Allah said you should tell your believing women, and then they were silent about the other one. So he used it to convince the stupid uh, judge that uh, uh, Allah is only talking about believing women, that these children are just minor, so they should not worry about them. And because of that, they nullified that, that of Abel Kuta, the Asia girl. And then we are appealing that now. And uh, another, another lawyer who claimed to be from Milori was trying to bring that forth in an ISI case in Ibadan. Uh, one Tani, he said he was Tani, he was uh, formerly a Muslim and now divert, uh, um, converted to Christianity. So he was not saying he's from Milori, he knows the area very well, but of course, his meeting is March. We are on that. We are meeting again on March 11. The third one is that our parents, we should get more involved in the activities of our children at MSS level in their various, uh, in their various schools. It's like we are too far away from them. We should relate with uh, them. Then, if some people are doing something, please, if you know you cannot do it, don't criticize them. Don't abuse them. Don't blame them. Just do your own. If somebody covers a face and you know you cannot cover your own, don't say, why did you cover this man? Mm -mm -mm. Just do your own. Just leave her. And people that are doing this are not even our own Christians, even our own Muslims. So we should stop doing that. And these are some of the things we should be doing so that we should not be attacking one another. Of course, I want to appreciate these organizers. I have to come all the way back from uh, Ibadan to attend this function. Uh, it's how important it is for me. I was at the, uh, this place yesterday. So I think we should encourage one another. Uh, I've been told my time is all. Then media sensitization. As the president of uh, Muslim media, we've been doing our little effort to ensure this sensitization and I promise you that we will continue to do that, especially as relating with the bill in the National Assembly. We are following, we are following it up and then we are going to do some other things. Uh, lastly, we met somewhere last Friday, yesterday morning, and we deliberated series of other strategies, apart from the strategies we've been using before on this issue of hijab which I will not want to divulge now, but uh, in a moment of time, you'll be seeing some of these strategies being implemented. So if we come to you, please, we need your support and your cooperation. I thank you very much for coming. Jazakum Allah of Ireland. May we all witness more of this on the surface of the heart. Thank you. The future is sure. Eh? <laughs> Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa agenda is remarked by our special guest of honor. Of course, you know who our special guest of honor is. She is Her Excellency, Dr. Amina Namadi Sambo, wife of the former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. She is a founder 
and chairperson of I Care Women Youth Initiative. She is well known as a vocal force for unity and equality. She has made a world of difference in the lives of countless Nigerians. To us in the Ummah, she is a Latifa to Ummah. She is joining us via Zoom. I told you earlier that it's a hybrid event. I don't know if she is here, if she can join us. We take a good message from her, but then, sorry, we take a remark from her. But then if she is not, she is always ever prepared for us. We have a smaller version of her here. Hajia Hassan look at, they look so much alike. But if our Latifa Tun Umar is with us, then we can take her remark, please. A special guest of honor, Her Excellency, the wife of the um, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Hajia Aisha to Muhammad Buhari, the Honorable Minister of Education, ably represented by the Deputy Director, Universal Basic Education, Hajia Sadiq at Shomikper, the former Minister of Education and a Honorable Member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Hajia Aisha Duku. Another honorable representative of the House of uh, another honorable member of the House of Representatives, uh, Honorable Abdullah, who is also a sponsor of the Hijab Bill, the Chief Lecturer and the Director, Muslim Rights Concern, Muri, Professor Ishaq Akitola. The National Amiria Form 1 Federation of Muslim Women's Association of Nigeria, Hajia Rafiat Idousani, all other protocols duly observed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The guest of honor, Hajia Dr. Amina Mohammed Mamadi Sambo would have loved to attend this occasion, but is unavoidably absent and has requested me to read out her, good, uh, her speech. Always remember that in your hijab, you can be prudent yet so elegant. You can be simple yet so beautiful. You can be modest yet so dignified. If the ladder fits you, wear it. I am starting with this quote that I have used every year at every occasion, which I am sure my sisters have become so familiar with. But then I will continue to remind us of this due to its relevance and the message it carries. It's another February and it's a month that means different things to different people. To us Muslims, it's just another Gregorian month. It is, however, becoming a month that Muslim women are making synonymous with our pride, our dignity, our faith, and compliance with Allah's injunction that we cover ourselves. The world now knows that at the beginning of every, every February, Muslim women across the group mark the World Hijab Day to draw attention, educate, enlighten all on what it means to our faith. When we first commemorated the Hijab Day in Nigeria in 2014, little did we, I know that the day will grow to become what it is today. Even though I am not surprised because the hijab is not only the identity of the Muslim woman, but also obedience to Allah's command. Cautioning women against unveiling their aura 
which constitutes the whole of our body except the face and wrist. Quran 33 verse 39 states, and I quote, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the meaning of this verse is, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of believers to bring down over themselves of their outer garments that is more suitable that they will be known and not be abused. And ever is Allah forgiven and merciful. Let me acknowledge and command the constituency of the Coalition of Nigerian Women in marking the day every year. I am most enthusiastic with a series of activities lined up this year, from the press conference on the actual day on Tuesday to awareness outing yesterday and this lecture today. This shows commitment and determination to make our voices heard. Our persons seen and our knowledge enrich. enrich. The theme of this year's celebration, hijab is our crown, not our crime, sends clear message of what the Islamic culture is and what it is not. And today's lecture, titled The Hijab as a Metaphor of Our National Aspiration, is equally apt and most appropriate. Looking at what is, what is happening in some states and even among Islamic communities, despite the global attack on this very important aspect of our faith as Muslim, especially women, I am pleased to note that we are more determined to sensitize and promote this Islamic identity and culture without intimidation. It is true that every few others who do not represent Islam have used the hijab to perpetrate evil. But that should not be used to stereotype Muslim women and also not deter us from obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to urge us all, particularly young Muslim women who are faced with peer pressure, not to be influenced by the so-called modernization as a mode of dressing in the name of fashion and indecent and, Im are indecent and immoral. They are in direct conflict with our religion, just as the Prophet of Islam cautioned in different hadith, hadiths. The hijab is an inseparable companion of the Muslim women. We must therefore wear it with pride and faith so that we can protect our identity and earn Allah's acceptance and reward. My dear sisters, distinguished guests, I would at this juncture like to commend the scholars for the lecture which has or will further strengthen our faith and belief to wear our hijab anytime and anywhere. I would also urge the organizers to continue to work towards making every edition better that, than the previous ones. Thank you very much for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Yes, indeed, we have tried. We have made it. We have seen it happen up to the 2022 World Hijab Day. To me and to you, because I've just heard from the floor, Alhamdulillah, I want to believe it's a success. And I want to believe that you all believe that it is a success. We've had it starting from the press conference to the outreach yesterday and today's public lecture. We give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us be into this moment. But we cannot draw the curtain without asking somebody to come and appreciate us. Because there's an adage that goes that you cannot be a judge in your own case. I cannot stand here and tell you it's been a success. Maybe somebody out there is not looking at the success side of the story. So on that note, I would like to invite um, the Amira of the Global Foundation to come on the podium 
either to appreciate or disqualify us, but, but most importantly, to tell us thank you for gathering in this hall today. If the Amira is here, the floor is yours, please. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Some all the protocols. Um, Alhamdulillah, Allah has brought us here for another year. We have been doing this since 2014. That's, this is the eighth edition. Alhamdulillah, and it's growing bigger and bigger. Um, we thank you all for taking out your time to join us in this wonderful occasion, World Hijab Day, that is on the 1st of February every single year. So as she just said, we've been doing this for six days now. Thank you very much for taking out your time, coming here with us, showing your, sorry, giving us your experiences, encouragement, and teaching us how to be able to be Muslim women in the modern day, wearing your hijab, and being proud of it. May Allah continue to bless us and help us do as much as we can. Thank you very much for all your time. May Allah continue to spare our lives and help us do better. We will share the reward indeed. So we are um, taking a closing prayer from our sister. You please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, the person that is going to sweep all the rewards. I'm Sister Bilta Haruna Metala from Jos. I'm a mother, a widow, sorry, and a grandmother, and a mother to all our special and blessed children. May Allah bless the a uh, Muslim ulama. With this, I'm saying that, or oh, I'm adding, sorry, I always want you as a Muslim to have this in mind. I remember Surah al when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hala ataka hadith al and another surah, Lam Yakunil Ladina Kafaru, Min Ahadi Kitabi, Wal Mushrikina Mufakina, Hatta Tati Yakum and Bayina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging the prophets to be strong in religion and taqwa. Allah is telling the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be strong and firm. So with this, I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the Muslim ulma. And as mothers, you know there is no barrier between our prayers with our children. I'm encouraging and begging and asking the mothers, please, whenever you pray, Remember, Ya Allah, Sabiqulubuna wa Afsarina Fiddin for all the Muslim Ummah. With this, I want us all to recite Surah to the end of Surah to Baqarah for the goodness of all the Muslim Ummah all over the world. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amana Rasulu Bima Unzila Ilaihi Biwa Bihi Wal Muminu Ulluna Amana Bilahi Wamada Ikatihi Wakutubihi Wa Rasuli La Nufar Riku Baina Ahadim Mir Rusuli Wakadu Inna Samiina Wa Atana Gufra Nakarabbana Wa Ilaikal Masir La Yukatlifulla Hunafsan Illa Usaha Laha ma kasabat wa alayha ma kasabat. Rabbana la tu'akhizna in nasi'ina au a'atana. Rabbana wa la tu'hammil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala al-lazina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tu'hammilna ma la taqata lana bi wa afu anna wa firlana wa rhamna. Anta Maulana, 
fansuruna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin ya ar-rahman ar-rahim ya hayyu ya qayyum radina billahi rabba wa bil islam dina wa bi muhammadir rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyan wa rasulan wa la na'budu illa iyyaka mukhlisina lahu ad-din wa la ukhriha al-mushrikin ya arhamar rahimin arhamna muslimuna ya arhamar rahimin ya muqallib al-qulub sabbil qulubuna wa asarina fi ad-din bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin malik yawm ad-din iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in اللهم تقبل منا انك انت السميع الدعاء يا الله بورك في ام المسلمين في الدنيا والاخره يا الله اللهم سلم وسلم على حبيبي نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قرة عينا وعلى محمد وسلم واصحاب محمد وسلم ومن تبعه الى يوم الدين لا اله الا الله وحدا انت سواحدا ونسر عبدا واحس جندا لا اله الا الله ولا نعبد الا اياك مخلصين له الدين ولو كره المشركين الحمد لله بالاسلام الحمد لله على كل حال حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا في يا احد يا صمد يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك استغيث يا لطيف يا الله الله اكبر الله اكبر اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد سبحان الله ثم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك يا الله